So a lot can be said about borderline personality disorder and emotions. And emotion is one of the root causes behind BPD episodes, BPD splitting, BPD mood swings, and a whole slew of you know, facets of different BPD symptoms, okay? So to understand how emotion plays a part in the condition, we kind of have to work backwards a little bit, which is something we do in interventive emotional skills all the time. Now that entails cutting a situation down to the bone and getting to even the marrow in some cases and understanding where, you know, the uh, afflicted regions of your personality or mentality are in terms of emotion. So just to give you a little recap on how emotion can rule our situation in our world as a BPD person or anybody in general, but especially somebody with BPD, you know, let's say that you are in a bad mood. You had something happen to you a couple of days ago or whatever, or maybe earlier this morning, and you're now at work and somebody says to you, you know, hey, why are you in such a bad mood? And you're like, oh, well, I had this thing happen to me, you know, earlier this morning, and I'm not over it. And you say, okay. Now let's say that mood persists for days upon days or maybe a week. And then that same person comes up to you and says, oh, hey, you know, why are you in such a bad mood? And you're like, oh, you know, I had this thing happen to me like a week ago. I'm still not over it. So your mood has now become, you know, more prevalent of an emotion and it's now controlling a lot of your thought behavior. So it's now a behavior. Okay. Now let's say a month goes by or longer and the same person comes up to you and says, oh, hey, you know, why are you in such a bad mood? And you're like, oh, I had this thing happen to me in the past. You know, I'm still not over it. It's now become a personality trait. So to understand how emotion can rule our life, we have to see and admit how long emotions can last, especially if you have borderline personality disorder. So getting ahead of that means, you know, no longer giving emotion control over our behavior, but giving the control back to our mind. And the first step in that process, as we teach in IES, is to figure out what emotion is at play. You know, how did you feel when that thing happened to you that one morning so long ago? You know, what was your emotion behind it? Was it embarrassment? Okay, well, why would you feel embarrassed? You know, and you have to start breaking down that thought process that follows the emotion so you can give brain control over body. I hope this helps somebody.